I tried to make me go to rehab. I said no, no, no. 129 people die every day in this country from a drug overdose. Why so serious? Recovery can be fun. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to take a step. Recover out loud. Break the stigma. Host Holly and various guests discuss the important topics about addiction and recovery. They are not quote-unquote experts, but just real people telling real stories. Any or no addictions are welcome. Recovery Talk starts now. Thanks for tuning in to Recovery Talk today. I'm super happy to interview our guest, Freddie Negretti, today. If you like the show or want to support it, please subscribe on our speaker page, also on our Facebook page. Um, that's the only way we can measure support and growth. We want to hear from you. You can email us at recoverytalkpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Spreaker, iTunes, and SoundCloud, and hopefully by now you should know all that. So our guest today, we have Freddie Negretti. Am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Okay, great. He's a legendary tattoo artist based in Hollywood, California. He's the author of Smile Now, Cry Later, Guns, Gangs, and Tattoos. He has been featured in the History Channel's Mark series, Burial of Blood. Freddie appeared as a guest judge on Spike TV's second season of Ink Master, he has been in major Hollywood films such as Batman, Con Air, Austin Powers, and Falling Down. He won Tattoo Artist of the Year in 1980. He's also worked with Ed Hardy. He went on to pioneer the fine line black and gray work seen on everyone from inmates to A-listers. From prison and from suffering drug addiction for many years, Freddie is now a certified volunteer working closely with young addicts. He also leads a group in Los Angeles treatment facility and now tattoos at the Shamrock Social Club on the Sunset Strip. So thanks for being on the show today, Freddie. I'm super excited, and you have a new book out? Yes, Smile Not Cry Later. Great, that's awesome. The more I get to know you, the more I'm interested in reading that book. Um, you just want to tell us a little bit about it? Uh, you know, it's it's uh, my life story, you know, and uh, uh, of course people always ask, you know, uh, why did you write a book, or why did you you know, want to write a book or whatever. And I, I think there's some, uh, things in there that are great in interest, uh, to people, you know, my, my story is kind of wild, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's the, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, my, my growing up as a troubled youth and in, uh, the Chicano Vargas of East LA, which is of great interest to people these days. Mm -hmm. Uh, also there's, uh, the prison life. Uh, California prison is, uh, has a pretty sophisticated system with the inmates. And, uh, there's a great interest in that. Then of course, uh, the tattoo things, uh, you know, the, uh, pioneering of the black and gray, one of the most popular styles of tattooing today. And, um, and, but most of all, it's a story of redemption and recovery. And that's the real reason why I felt compelled to write this book is because of uh, what I went through in uh, drug addiction and um, and my path to uh, recovery, mm -hmm. and and hopefully that I could uh, reach some people mm -hmm. uh, that are experiencing the same troubles. Yeah, definitely. So, how did this crazy journey start? Uh, I guess, you know, it, it goes way back. My yeah. my parents uh, were both uh, Pachuco gangsters, and they went to prison when I was two years old. And I grew up in foster care and, and uh, suffered from abuse, uh, you know, physical abuse through those those years and ended up rebelling and becoming a gang member and living a really hard life and spending most of my time in prisons and institutions but uh, I learned a tattoo in there and I was able to um, bring my tattooing from prison to the streets eventually to a shop Good Time Charlie's in East LA and um, which was really a life-changing thing for me because <clears throat> we introduced a new style to the tattoo world which became very popular but uh even through my success with that, I still, 
uh, struggle with drug addiction, you know, over the years, up and down, up and down, and uh, mainly heroin. <clears throat> and um, it brought me a lot of failure in my life, eventually uh, nearly destroying my life. I, I was uh, eventually in the county jail. I suffered from three heart attacks, <clears throat> oh, wow. had congestive heart failure, and um, I believe that God reached, uh, reached out and touched me, mm -hmm. healed my body, and gave me a new start on life. Yeah, now how long were you in prison for over many years? Well, <clears throat> uh, mainly when I was young. I mean, uh, I started with juvenile, juvenile hall and youth authority. I mean, the longest period of time that I stayed out would be like, you know, from the age of 12 to 22 was like two months. I can't remember staying out longer than that. Oh, wow. And, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, is that my phone? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe. Do you hear something? Okay. Oh, you don't hear it? That's okay. No. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, I was quite institutionalized, you know, um, and I was living a hard life, you know. So did you learn that type of tattooing while in jail? Yes. Uh, so <clears throat> when I was in youth authority, I got in big trouble in there. I was, uh, you know, like one of those impossible cases, you know, of troublemakers and what they would do is, and Youth Authority, by the way, is uh, it's like California prison for for um, juveniles, you yeah. know. So it's a, a state institution, like prison for kids. <clears throat> and um, anyways, when so um, I ended up in a program uh, called Tamarack Program for like criminally insane. Youth, you know, it was a lockup program. Uh, but the staff there, you know, their policy with us was one of leniency. You know, it's just like, look, as long as you guys don't kill each other, we'll let you tattoo. We'll let we won't search your rooms. We'll bring you pornography. So they kind of let us tattoo, and at the same time, you know, we we got these uh, the plans on how to build a homemade tattoo machine out of a tape cassette motor. And um, and we just, I tattooed every day, and I got really, really good at it because I was born with, you know, art ability. And so um, I know the story. I, I, I don't see any of the things happening in my life that happen without going through that program where they let us tattoo, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's very rare. You know, usually prison stories about tattooing are, uh, having to hide from the staff or hide from the prison guards because it's illegal in there, you know. But mm -hmm. this was the one and only rare case where they actually let us do it. That's cool. And so when I got out, you know, I immediately set up in my apartment in East L.A. And meanwhile, there was a, a tattoo shop that opened up professionally in, in East L.A. Uh, called Good Time Charlie's. And... When they opened up, they realized, hey, these people over here, they wanted their tattoos to look like they were done in prison. And so they adjusted, <clears throat> excuse me, they adjusted to that and and um, and um started doing single needle, fine line, black and gray tattoos for people. Uh, eventually, I had already bought that shop and he gave me a job there huh? and myself and Jack Rude. I'm sorry. Oh, how was working with Ed Hardy? That's the one who bought the shop. That was amazing. Said? Yeah, it was amazing. You know, like, um, I, I, you know, I was a prison tattoo artist and tattooing out of my apartment. Going into the professional world was really um, foreign for me because we we didn't like professional tattoos to us. They were cartoony and you know simple mm -hmm. and we wanted our tattoos to look detailed and realistic you know that's where they were done in prison 
but Ed Hardy was was a genius artist who uh, learned the Japanese style in Japan. He introduced Japanese style tattooing to America. He discovered our black and gray, uh, <clears throat> and he his obje- objective was to get people to realize that tattooing was more than just some carny thing for sailors and gangsters, that it was a form of art. Mm-hmm. And um, and he, we accomplished that, that objective, I think, you know, because <clears throat> now, right now, there's an exhibit at, at you know, um, the Museum of Natural History in Los Angeles, you know, uh, showing the history of tattooing and how it's become a beautiful form of art. Mm-hmm. That's super awesome. And then you also were getting noticed even from Hollywood and being in part of some of those movies. Uh, yeah. So, um, I guess it was about, uh, 1980, I was contacted by, uh, um, a film director named Taylor Hackford, who <clears throat> was working on a, a prison movie called Blood In, Blood Out which uh, has become a cult classic. And um, and somebody had told him that if he wanted prison-style tattoos, he should talk to me. <laughs> so uh, I, I went to work for him. That was my first film. And I met uh, the, a famous makeup artist named Freddie Blau, who invented the uh, temporary tattoo process for films. And him and I went on to work on over 30 features over the years, you know, and, and, and tons of tech, uh, you know, um, television shows. And, and, you know, it was really new, you know, at that time, um, doing tattoos for movies because they hadn't used a lot of tattooing in movies before, before this, you know, Mm -hmm. now it's, it's the norm. If you noticed, yeah, (laughs) but, yeah, well, that's awesome. So, <clears throat> yeah, the, so we did a lot of a lot of great things with uh, the uh, temporary tattoo process. Uh, now there's a new process, but uh, you know, eventually Freddie Blau retired, and and they came up with a new way that computers could do it. So, um, that's the natural progression of things, I guess. Yeah, who would be the most famous person that you tattooed or even maybe the most memorable? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've tattooed a lot, yeah. you know. Um, you know, I guess Billy Bob, Billy Bob Thornton. Mm-hmm. For, for me, because he became a really good friend and he's one of the funniest men I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> and I also work. I worked with them on Blood In, Blood Out. You know, I had the opportunity to, you know, work with uh, a lot of good directors like Joel Schumacher and and uh, <clears throat> Taylor Hackford um, and, and many more, you know. Yeah. Um, so it was always fun, you know, because they'd be, ah, the tattoo artist is here, you know. And, <laughs> and, you know, so it was a good experience. Awesome. So, how long have you been in recovery now? So, um, <clears throat> coming up here on the 20th Ooh. Uh, is my 10-year anniversary. Wow, well, congratulations. Thank you. What Thank you, and I... Oh, go ahead. I really enjoy... Uh, you know, I, I just uh, like this you know, shout out uh, the uh, treatment center that I went through, Beit Shuva, which is uh, it's a, a Jewish treatment center, you know, and, um, you know, I, it was just life-changing for me. I did everything they asked me in the program, and and um, I still, you know, I volunteer there leading groups for uh, young adults from 18 to 25, uh, they're all mostly heroin addicts, <clears throat> so I'm in touch with, uh, you know, what these kids are going through these days. I also work at another treatment center called A.